Hey, it's me, Pro Jared. Welcome back to Death Gate. We are actually in the Death Gate now. And we just learned of the, um, the lore of the Tiger Men, which is basically death, the black robe, and a skull head that shoots lightning. And I've got the skull head and the robe, so I'm gonna go pretend to be a, a death god in the Death Gate. So that's fun. Uh, what's this way? Uh oh. You stand on the outskirts of a village in the throes of battle. A pack of tiger men circle a group of patrons huddled under a magic shield. This. Do I spook them now? Wear the robe. Wear the mask. Uh. Uh oh. So it looks like they're using a warring spell to protect themselves, but they're not going to be able to go anywhere. I still have this freaking arrow. Ah, uh, Shelters. The simple shelters are sewn together hides of various animals. You recognize some, but others come from beasts the labyrinth must have spawned since you left. The huts are lightweight and portable, matching the nomadic nature of the patrons. Can I go on one? The tiger creatures in the way you can't enter. Alright. Shield. One man standing in the middle of a huddled mass of people holds his hands out. He strains to support a magic shield which encircles his group. Just outside, the tiger creatures scratch and push at the shield. They seem to sense that it is faltering, that it might fall at any moment. Are those my people? Other patrons? Can I go past them? Nope. Okay. I guess... I guess spook the tiger man away. Um... Put the robe on the skull? Oh, here we go. You slip the robe over the tiger man's skull and reach your arm through it, your hand manipulating the jaw <laughs> Ah! <laughs> tiger man! Know that you are faulty here! I shall defeat you all. I am death coming for you. You must run from me. That's the end of that bit. You do a quick ventriloquist act, including some hilarious one-liners about how many tiger creatures does it take to screw in a glow lamp, but quickly become bored. So you disassemble your creation, but not before noticing it resembles to the painting in the burial cave. Yes, obviously! Wait. Oh, zinger. Does this still work? It has no power. Fuck. <gasps> I know how to get a power. One sec. I'll be right back. You guys just hold on there. Can I put the zinger on the... Onto the spires so that... Is this still gonna thunder? Shit. Okay. Is it not thundering here anymore? It was earlier. I can't put it on. Uh, I wonder if I need those that down there before I roasted the tiger men. Like if I did in the wrong, in like the wrong order. Oh, where did I last save? I last say that death gate. Right, let me try this. So from here, like these were actually going. You hurl the zinger into the masses, twisting vines. They snatch it out of the air and carry it off to the nearest spire. Particularly, lightning strikes the spire, but instead of destroying the sardine artifact, the energy is totally absorbed by the zinger. It charges itself with the power of the lightning. Sick. Oh, I guess, yeah. I should have I had to heat it back up. Then give it the zinger so the vines would grab it, then it would get charged. Okay. 
That's all I was missing. We're just letting the vines grab that. Well, I'm right now, I now got a fully juiced zinger so I can spook him with lightning. Alright. Hi, guys! Eek! Alright, same thing. Heat these bad boys back up. You guys get murdered. We'll freeze the vines again so that I can go past them. Uh, take a scuttle, because that's good time. Walk into here, grab the bone. Remember that. And then, okay. So right back where we left off. Put the skull on the zinger. Whoa! You slipped the electric creature skull over the central prong of the electric zinger. Oh, and then I put the robe on it and then turn it on and just let it go ape shit. <laughs> That's awesome! Uh, have at it! You pull the switch attached to the electric zinger. The contraption flies out of your hands, twisting and turning in the air, accompanied by a screeching metallic whine. The black robe flops back and forth, and lightning flies from the eyes of the mountain skull. All the combatants stare up at the apparition. The tri tiger creatures point and hiss at the flying sideshow, and then scatter in random directions, pure terror in their eyes. When the zinger's power drains, it drops out of sight somewhere in the forest. The shield around the huddled villagers finally falls. Methodically, they begin to scatter through the village, locating and tending to the wounded. One man seriously injured lies in front of you. The headman of the village, who valiantly supported the magic shield for so long, approaches the wounded man and summons a healer. A nervous, young-looking woman rushes over, nearly dropping her package of healing herbs and implements. She surveys the horrible wound sustained by the fallen patron and gasps, but a stern look from the headman prods her to, into her routine. She tries to clean and dress the wounds, but they are too severe. You can tell she is inexperienced, and that this case is much too much for her. Also, how amazing was it that I've had the electric zinger for like since like the beginning of the game, and I just now used it for something? Uh, stand back, fools! I shall save him! Because of the severity of the man's wounds, you end up emptying the crock of the healing salve over his chest. You can see the gashes close up in the space of a few heartbeats. The healer gasps, but the headman nods. He looks at you with newfound respect. The healer is shocked, but she doesn't let this amazing development slow her down. And quickly, she packs away all of her tools and moves on to help the other injured villagers. In her haste, she drops a cord, presumably used to stitch wounds. The headman stays on to direct the healthy patrons in packing up the village. It appears that he plans to quit this site soon. Mine! I now have a cord. Yay. Uh, damn, we got some people to talk to. You healed me. Brought me back from the brink of death. I am indebted to you. Uh, nice chest rune? It was nothing. It was everything. I'm in your debt. I don't like being in someone's debt. Tell me how I can repay you. Uh, I don't know. I hear you're a pretty good tracker. Oh yeah, I help me find this dude. I know its signs. I can sense how it changes, sometimes even how it will change. If I find the start of a trail, I will never lose my way. Could you help me find a dark... Uh... Do you think you could help me? Of course. I'm in your debt. Tell me what I must do to absolve myself of it. Um... Can you teach me to track? To teach you everything I know would take years. Damn. Neither of us have that kind of time. We could be dead tomorrow. There must be something else I can do for you. You can! I'm on the trail of Lord Czar and his companion, who happens to be a shape-shifting dragon. Do you think you can find them? Of course. That's what I do. I will accompany you while I track them. When I'm certain that we've found them, my obligation to you is resolved. I must return to my village. Oh, don't worry. You'll know when we find them. I got a new buddy. He doesn't even have a name, just Tracker. Uh, hey dude. I never expected you to return. I should kill you for what you've done. If you hadn't driven those tiger creatures off, I would kill you. Why you did that after you led them here in the first place is beyond me. What? Leave me now. Oh. You've done enough damage. You th I'm you thinking the dragon. That that's not that wasn't me. What are you talking about? I didn't leave the creatures here. Of course you did. Not more than 2 hours ago, you and Lord Czar passed through this village. Unwittingly, we helped you. 
We gave you current directions towards the center because for some reason that's where you wanted to go. You were very pleasant then. You thanked us and went on your way. Shortly thereafter, you returned alone, leading a charge of the tiger creatures. During the battle, you disappeared. I don't know why I don't gut you right now. We lost more men in the skirmish than we have in a month of fighting. Now this encampment is compromised. Uh -oh. We'll have to move as soon as we're able. And we have you to thank for it. Uh, now I'm not gonna say you're welcome. That wasn't me. Lord Czar is accompanied by a shape-shifting dragon. I'm on their trail. A shape-shifting dragon? That's a new one. I wouldn't put it past the labyrinth, though it's getting more and more devious every day. If this dragon accompanies Lord Czar, then as long as he doesn't realize the true nature of his companion, he is in mortal danger. Right. My resources are meager, but I am willing to help you as I can. What would you have of me? Maybe, I don't know, maybe a sword that killed dragons? Because Zar is pretty evil, but then there's a dragon who's more evil using Zar, and it's just... It's a lot of evil just compounding upon each other. Uh... Tell me how the dragon got the tiger creatures to attack. It wasn't difficult. It's not really important. Remaining hidden from the dangers of the labyrinth is a daily struggle. The pack of tiger creatures moved into the area not long ago. He paid them a visit, then came straight here. The entire pride followed, snarling for blood. The creatures were delighted to discover the village. They pounced and caught us completely by surprise. Many died in the first few moments. The rest rallied here in the center. We managed to shield ourselves until you arrived. I'm glad you came when you did. I don't know how much longer the magic would have lasted. Uh... Can you tell me where Lord Czar and the dragon went when they left here? Certainly. They entered the forest to the north. Okay. But that information won't help you much. The labyrinth reinvents itself all the time. Yeah. Paths that Czar and the dragon followed could have vanished, could even be pits or swamps. Only a skilled tracker could find them now. If only we had one! What dangers can I expect further along in the labyrinth? I've never traveled backward through the labyrinth. Our goal is to leave here. Even so, though every step toward the final gate presents a challenge, I doubt that the labyrinth would prevent someone from penetrating deeper into it. It's akin to walking toward the center of a spider's web. When you finally arrive, you'll have a devil of a time getting back out. You'd be doing the labyrinth's job for it. Any obstacles you encounter are not likely to have been placed there by the labyrinth. More likely, you will find traps set by the dragon. Uh oh It seems to me that the attack of the tiger creatures was such a trap. Obviously, the dragon didn't care whether we defeated them or not. If we managed to defeat them, we would kill you on sight for loosing them upon us. If we didn't, the whole area would be swarming with them. Either way, it would have been rough going for you. Let me think on this. Very well. I must okay. instruct the survivors to begin packing up the village. We can't remain here for long. The scent of so much blood on the wind will draw predators from all parts of the labyrinth. If you think of anything, simply ask. All right, I guess uh, I can enter the shelters. You poke your head into one of the shelters, but find it crowded with wounded, so you quickly depart. All right, is there anything else in here that's important before we go? No? All right, keep going. Traveling at a pace you have trouble matching and discovering small clues you never would have found, the tracker leads you through the dark wood. Eventually, you come upon a huge cave. A monster, which resembles a huge insect, though much more formidable, stands guard outside. The trail leads here into that cave. Uh -oh. I've seen this cave before. There is no exit. Your quarry lies inside. Help me kill a the bug? The creature guarding the entrance is a Cheodon. I've only encountered their like once or twice before, and I can tell you this. If you spill its blood, every drop will grow into a duplicate of the monster. Ah. Only by killing it before it bleeds, usually with a precise thrust through its heart, can you keep it from regenerating. A sloppy attack, and you'll have an army of these things to contend with. Damn. Okay. Usually the best way to deal with this type of beast is to avoid it. I don't think you've got that luxury, though. If you're going into that cave, you'll have to go through the Cheodon. My obligation to you is over. Oh. I've led you to the end of the trail. The people of my village need my help, so I must return. Good luck. The tracker bolts into the wood. Between one moment and the next, you've lost all trace of him. You're not alone, save for the delightful company of the Cheodin, of course. Alright! 
What's the plan here? Stab his heart? I'm going to save the game. Scyther! Alright, um... I also got this arrow I could try... Stab him with his spears. Take this! With abandon and little else, including good sense, you leap to attack the Chairden with the Rusty Garden Shear. The element of surprise gives you time for one clean swipe. You manage to slice off one of the monstrous pincers. That's not what I wanted to do. The Chaoden screeches and fountains of a, a, a green, ichor like blood from the wound. As each drop strikes the ground, a new Chaoden magically forms, each with bloodlust in its compound eyes. Soon, you're surrounded by an army of giant insects, and even a rusty shear can't fend them off. Dad. Alright. We look around here. Cave. The Chaodin is another monstrosity, cooked up by the twisted imagination of the labyrinth. It resembles an enormous insect. It is undoubtedly very dangerous. Alright, if I wanted to... What if I... Can I throw this at him, make you non-magical, and cut you up? Arrow? Sh shoot the arrow at the Chaodin? Thunk? I have nothing to, to which to shoot the magic arrow. Yeah, I was worried about that. Alright. What do we got for magic on this bad boy? Now, when it says self-immolation, is the self me or him? Bzzz. The spell won't work on anything besides yourself. Okay, why do I have this spell, by the way? Uh... Resurrection, Unravel Illusion. Maybe Hunger? See if that'll make him, like, wander off looking for food? The Chaodin doesn't have an ability to feel hungry. Shit. This is the, uh, try everything on everything part of the point-and-click adventure. What can I do with this cord? Oh! 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 No, I got it! Uh, yes! Use the cord under the bone to make a bow! Now I shoot the arrow. Bitch. Thunk. With amazing accuracy, far more than you would have expected from such a primitive bow, you loose the arrow at the monster. The arrow penetrates straight through its heart, and the beast falls dead before a drop of its blood can fall. Unfortunately, the arrow has buried itself deeply into the creature and cannot be retrieved. That's too bad, but fucking got him. I can't pull it free? Oh, if I can't pull it free, can I... Shear it free? Take this! You hack the corpse of the monster for a while. But only managed to dull the shear further. Yeah, but I feel better. I feel like this wouldn't just be here unless I could retrieve it somehow. Like by casting... I don't know. Wait, can I... What if I were to resurrect the Chaodin? Hear me out. If I resurrect it, it will kill some other random ass Chaodin in the world, which I'm okay with. Uh, do I control him? Nothing happens. Only works in higher life forms. Damn. All right. Well, got him. Moving on. You walk toward the cave, but a familiar wave of fears washes over you. The leaden weight of terror pulls you to your knees. You can't force yourself to enter the opening. Fuck. That means I need to drink the water bottle. Go into the cave. And, uh... Pretty much face the dragon again. Am I ready for that? I don't know if I am. You know what? Let's end this episode here. Defeated all the Tigermen. Tracked my way toward where Zar and the dragon left. I don't... How much of the game is left? I'm almost at 1,200 points. I don't know if I missed anything, but seemed like getting towards the end. But, yeah, we'll call it here. Death Gate's getting intense. Especially now that we're reaching... Uh, we're getting towards the end of it. It, it feels like... 
Unless there's like another world beyond this or something. I don't know. I'm using a lot of my a lot of my items. Not a whole lot of remaining after this, but hey, I'm still having a good time. I hope you guys are too. So, as always, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time.